the reason you own want to own gold, or the reason you want to own silver is because they cannot default in a world that is defaulting. And when people ask me, well, how much should I put into gold or silver? Or gold and silver? And my standard answer is whatever you don't want to lose because no matter where you have it, in any type of paper contract or any type of, of situation where you have an intermediary between you and your money, there's going to be bankruptcies all over the place and you're going to lose, you're going to lose your capital. And you, you can't, that can't happen with gold and silver because they cannot default. Bill Holter, a seasoned expert in precious metals, shared his insights into the shifting dynamics of the gold and silver markets. He points to a supply demand imbalance, highlighting the significant transfer of these metals from the West to the East, tightening supply in the West and driving up prices. Holter also voices concerns about the integrity of gold holdings and ETFs, hinting at the existence of synthetic gold Gold, which could mislead investors about the true physical backing of their investments. Holter delves into the potential manipulation within the financial system, emphasizing the risks associated with the lack of transparency and genuine asset backing. He advocates for the tangible value and reliability of physical gold and silver as investments, especially in a landscape marked by financial uncertainty and systemic risks. Reflecting on the historical Historical significance of gold and silver as foundational elements of financial systems, Holter sees them as enduring pillars of stability. His perspective underscores the importance of physical ownership of these metals as a safeguard against the unpredictable shifts and inherent vulnerabilities of the modern financial ecosystem. Now, we'll show you more clips of Holter, but first, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications as those who watch our videos are better informed. Enjoy the episode. It's probably supply oriented. Um, we've we've seen a a premium in Shanghai of thirty to fifty dollars an ounce over Comex and LBMA for the last I don't know four, five, six months, and that's a it's a clean arbitrage. So what's happening is inventory is moving from west to east, and I think that's finally beginning to uh really tighten the supply in the west and if demand even stays the same and supply shrinks you'll see higher prices so i think that's what you're seeing is the arbitrage is finally starting to take effect you've seen a rally over the last month or two months um you know you've got gold now what 2150 or thereabouts it's a you know it's a clear breakout wouldn't surprise me if we traded back down to 20 70 2080 uh test the breakout level and then take off once this gets rolling silver is going to be gold on steroids um i do want to add uh one thing we've seen over the last uh probably six months and even longer actually we've seen uh, the amount of gold supposedly held by gld by some of the e etfs um we've seen their their uh position shrink it's, it's continually shrunk and it's my opinion if you read the prospectuses on a lot of these etfs they don't have to hold physical gold um you know they claim to hold x x amount of ounces my question is are they real ounces or are they synthetic ounces and my thought process is they understand what's going on behind the scenes. And I think what you're seeing is a closeout, if you will, of some of the games that they were playing. And that has affected the inventories of some of these ETFs. They're starting to dry up. So, you know, I, I don't have any any direct evidence of that, but my my sniffer tells me that a lot of this gold is synthetic and as they're as they're unwinding some OTC positions, the the long side obviously has to go also. So whether the long side is real or whether it's synthetic, I'm not hundred percent positive, but I suspect as is everything else in the world today, I think the inventory numbers for years have been been fabricated.
failure to deliver or failure to exist uh, will create a problem similar to or even greater than what happened in the nickel market two years ago. So, I mean, you could wake up one day, uh, and if you remember what happened with, with nickel, it was up over 100% in less than two days trading. So, yeah, I, I, I do think... I, I do think that that's uh, that's likely. You mentioned uh, solar demand. The Silver Institute just came out with numbers of 1.2 billion ounces of demand, and the the supply we know is just a shade under a billion ounces per year. So that's showing a deficit. But I think those silver, the Silver Institute numbers are way incorrect because there was well over 300 million ounces used just in solar so you know if you add if you add in uh the other uses and investment demand for silver i suspect the deficit is way more than 300 million ounces in today's market recap, silver price forecast facing downward pressure under 2480 time to sell. Silver's market dynamics have shown vulnerability with the commodities price at 2455, reflecting a cautious stance from investors. Let's take a look at the impact of recent U.S. economic data. Unemployment claims remained stable at 210,000, suggesting labor market resilience. Philly Fed manufacturing index turned positive at 3.2 against an expected 2.6, hinting at manufacturing sector health. Flash PMIs for manufacturing and services outperformed forecasts with readings of 52.5 and 51.7 respectively, indicating economic robustness. Now we'll show you more clips, but first hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and check our pinned comment. Enjoy the video investment since 1976 uh once americans by law were allowed to buy gold and buy silver again and hold the physical metal um so they've only been considered in investments for what uh 45 for, call it 50 years uh, and prior to that gold and silver were money gold and silver were the foundation to the world's financial markets and that changed in 1971 when the U.S. went off the gold standard. And then in 1973, when the petrodollar was created, you had uh, a foundation that was based on U.S. Treasury bonds, paper promises. Um, so the foundation, the foundation has been hollowed out because those bonds are issued by a, a bankrupt entity that it, at some point in time is not is not going to be able to pay or the markets are going to have to be flooded with dollars in order to make those bonds payable. When I say they're not an investment, uh, the reason you own want to own gold, the reason you want to own silver is because they cannot default in a world that is defaulting. And when people ask me, well, how much should I put into gold or silver or gold and silver? And my standard answer is whatever you don't want to lose because no matter where you have it, in any type of paper contract or any type of, of situation where you have an intermediary between you and your money, there's going to be bankruptcies all over the place and you're going to lose, you're going to lose your capital. And you, you can't, that can't happen with gold and silver because they cannot default. The world is more indebted now than it's ever been on any ratio, any way you want to measure it. The world is more indebted. They've been, they've raised interest rates that causes more stress, that causes, uh, more probability or, or it, it causes more probability of default. And the whole system, uh, and we, we, again, we're not even talking about derivatives. So when we add in derivatives of two quadrillion, now you're talking about, uh, the gaming table is, is bigger than, the assets on the planet. So uh, just understand that in a system that is bankrupting, you want your capital in something that cannot bankrupt. 
What do you think of Bill Holter's take? Will silver destroy gold on a relative basis in 2024? Post your price predictions in the comments section. Open yourself a Bybit account and get free $20 if you have not yet done so. And watch this video right here because you'll love it. I see you on the other side.